Audio Thing has teamed up with composer slash experimental music producer Heinbach to produce their third plugin together. Is this a plugin that's going to be useful to you and me? Let's find out. Today we're looking at Audio Things Gong Amp, and to talk about how this plugin came to be, we have to go back 90 years to the year 1932, where a man named Maurice Martineau created the first amp using a gong instead of a speaker cone. Flash forward almost 80 years later, a company called EOWAVE recreated this speaker inspired by Martineau's design. So now the sad news is this speaker cabinet is discontinued, it's no longer available unless you can find one used. But Audio Thing comes to the rescue, and they've created a plugin that simulates the speaker cabinet. So, as a composer, when I get a new plugin, the first thing I want to do is create a song and see is this going to work in a song setting. It's one thing to hear presets and sound demos, but it's a whole other thing to see is this going to work in a song setting. So what I've done today is I've created a composition using Gong Amp, and I want to give you an idea of what this plugin sounds like so you can figure out if this is right for you or not. I've heavily used Gong Amp. It's on seven out of the ten tracks that are in this composition. So this is Gong Amp, and I want to first just take you through the settings briefly. Down here in the mixer section, starting at the left, we have a drive knob. And the next two knobs are really interesting, and it's been uh, fun to play with so far. So you have a mono knob and a stereo knob and the mono knob is the speaker cabinet captured with one mic and the stereo knob is the speaker cabinet captured with two mics and you can actually turn both of these on or off and you can turn them both on at once and mix them together and then over here we have a resonate knob and then you have dry and wet and this right here is a soft clip knob and I think on most of the instances I use today I have the soft clip on and then going up here to the performance section, you have uh, dynamic, low and high. You have pitch, low, off, and high. Uh, I've been experimenting with this and uh, really like what it does. It's going to shift the frequency. It sounds like an octave down on low and an octave up on high. And then you have modulation. I haven't done a lot with that yet, but it says when you turn that up, it's going to uh, create a little more stereo spread. Then you have the howl setting right here, which is actually driving the gong more when you turn that on. Lastly, we have the trip section. This I've been having a lot of fun with. Uh, you can turn this on and off right here, and it will automate your settings down here in the mixer according to the BPM that you set here uh, in this, with the speed knob. And then lastly, you've got this little stereo spread knob. So I'm going to play you about a minute of this composition so you can hear the gong amp used in a song scenario and start getting an idea if this is right for you or not. And after the track finishes, we'll go through the tracks one by one and I'll show you what I did. it just keeps going so yeah let me go through some of these sounds and so with the drums I actually used audio things plug in the SR88 memory rhythm so I used that for those drums so first I'll show you the drum sound and I used 
gong amp on that to get the sound. It's heavily influencing what the drums sound like. So let me play that for you. So let me first play the drums without the gong amp, and then I'll pop it in. So here's without gong amp. Here's with gong amp in. So you can hear that it heavily influenced the sound of those drums and it gave it that more experimental kind of minimal electronic sound. Um, let me play that again dry and then I'll pop it in again. In. So right off the bat, just hearing that first uh, demonstration, you can tell that this is a, an effect that drastically can alter the sound of the source that you're putting it on. And that's what I've found today is that it's almost like another instrument because it has such a deep impact on the sounds that you use it on. Moving on, let me show you. So this is one of the main sounds in this song. I'll play it first without the gong amp and then I'll play it with the gong amp. So this is uh, one of the main sounds that goes through the whole thing. So this is without the gong amp. So it's just a good guitar harmonics. And then this is with the gong amp. Now you're hearing that actually pitch shifted up. That's You can see here in the performance that the pitch is turned to high, so you can get some cool effects with that pitch shift um, like you heard in that sound. And so let me move over here. So the, one of the first sounds that you hear in this demonstration was these guitar sweeps that I did. So let me play those dry, and then uh, I'll play those with the gong amp. Then with the gong amp. So that's a really beautiful preset. That's called Warp Chords. That's one of the presets. And again, that's utilizing this trip feature. And I think it's set to like, let's see, it's set to 16th uh, notes, dotted 16th notes. And it gave it that really cool sweeping effect. So I really like that. So one of the features I didn't go over is these three things on top of the speaker. You see the chains, then you see the wires, and then you see the pillow. Now you can turn them all on at once. And what these are is, for instance, like this sound had the wires on. So this is wires in front of the gong, and then it's recorded with the wires in front of it. And then same thing with chains, recorded with chains in front of it, and then recorded with the pillow in it. Now the pillow gives it a more muted sound um, to where it's not going to sustain as much for obvious reasons because you got that pillow muting the sound. So those are neat, and that's fun that you can play with all three of those and kind of mix and match and experiment and see what sounds best. So moving on, a big part of, of this composition was some vocals that I did, and I just grabbed a mic and just did some oohs and ahs and uh, long-held notes mostly because I knew that's kind of the sweet spot for gong amp is kind of minimalist, long-held stuff. And so let me, play, let me play the first one for you, and I'll play it without the gong amp and then with the gong amp. So here's without. Okay, now let me pop in gong amp. Now as you can see on this setting, I've got the chains and the wires on at the same time. So here's the next vocal, first dry, and then with. So now with gong amp. Okay, 
And again, that's utilizing that trip button, which is really fun to play with. And it really changed the sound. Now on that one, I had the, the pitch down too low, which gave it that lower resonance. Let me play that again. And then there's one more vocal track that I want to play for you. And I'll play that dry and then with gong amp. Now with gong amp. Now I'm going to play all three vocals, and I'm going to first play them with without gong amp, and then I'll put gong amp in on all three of them. Here's dry. And with gong amp. So once again, you can hear that it drastically changed the sound. And again, it just leads me to comment that it is technically an effects plugin, but it's almost like an instrument plugin because it has such a deep and profound effect on the signals that you put through it. So hopefully that gave you an idea if this plugin is right for you or not. I had a lot of fun making this composition, and I think so far for me the sweet spot with this is more of a minimalist cinematic sound or minimalist electronic, but I'm excited to try it on some other things as well. If you got some value out of this video, be sure to like and subscribe and also turn on the bell for notifications so you can know when my next video is coming out. Also, if you want to hear the full version of this song, you should be able to hear it right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. I would say it's sweet spot is definitely more of a minimalist. Min I can't say minimalist. Ha!